Thanks everyone for joining uh, Blue Sky State Audrey Training. My name is Akin Oladeji, and I'll be taking you through the second part of uh, the performance testing. Quick recap about what we did last week. Um, we talked about what JMeter is all about last week, how we can set it up, um, how we can set our, how we need to download Java as a precondition, how we need to set up our environmental variables for, for those that haven't set there uh, before. And we have a look at some of the basic features um, in Apache JMeter. How we can create our test plan, how we can how we can do from our test plan, how we can create the the thread group. And from the thread group, how we can create the samplers uh, from our thread group, which would be the HTTP request that we'll be working on to send our request. All right, and we have different type of HTTP requests, which I think I made mention about last week as well. So, so for this one, we'll be using HTTP request for to send uh, our request. And I'm sure I talked about the listeners, the different type of listeners that we have, and how you can get to the listeners, how you right click on your HTTP request uh scroll to listeners and you can select the different type of listeners uh, for your test and what are listeners listeners are just uh ways that you want uh your test results to be displayed back to you uh whether you want it in a table format or you want it in a graph format or you want it in any format you you want you can select any of the format you want it to be displayed onto you from the list uh, on your screen. So I think that is what we talked about last week. And let me go back to the slide to see where I stopped. I think I stopped on assertion last week. So what is assertion when it comes to performance testing? Uh, I'm not, I don't know how far you guys have gone when it comes to automation. I don't know what you've done and what you haven't done. Well, if you've gone too far in your automation, I'm sure you know about your BDD, which is your behavior uh, driven development. And from there, you know, there is given when then, right? And your then is your assertion when you're doing your automation. And what do you, why do you need your assertion? You need your assertion just to validate that all your precondition plus your action, uh, you can validate them when your test actually finish running that yes, this test actually is doing what I asked him to do. So you can, but it is sort of validation on your test. That is when you use assertion. So it's the same thing when it comes to performance testing. After running your test, you can assert uh, different type of thing. You can use different type of assertion to assert that, yes, it's the right page that has been displayed onto you. And you can see probably uh, a particular text on a particular page. So you can use assertion for that. So let's quickly look at the screen and read what that is all about. So assertion result display the result of your assertion applied on the sampler. You can see in the uh, below uh, figure, if an assertion fails, it will look like this. So when, you're, when, you, when you use assertion, uh, when you use one of the listeners, which is the assertion result on your test, and probably for one reason or the other, your test fails, then that is when your listeners, which is your assertion that you've used for your listeners, because you can, it's one, it's part of the assertion, it's part of the listeners, right? That is when and only when you see a result displayed on your assertion result. But if your assertion passes, then you won't see anything displayed on your screen, which we'll have a look at uh, later how that is done. All right. So assertion in JMeter is used to validate response of the request, as I, as I made mention earlier on, that you, that you have sent to the server. Assertion is a process where you verified expected results with the actual results. 
of the request at, at the runtime. So if you need to apply assertion on a particular sampler, then add it as a chart of that sampler. So you can view assertion result by adding assertion listeners to the group, to the thread group, or field assertion will be displayed in other listeners as well. So what that, what that is talking about is, you know, I said part of the listeners you can select. For this one, I think I've selected table, but if I want another type of assertion, I, if, I now, if I want another type of listeners, now I want assertion, right? Then I can I can choose any of these response to do my assertion. But if I want the listener, sorry, I can choose part of the listeners. You can see assertion results. I can add that to my test. And if my assertion fails, then the results will be displayed on the assertion screen, which you, which nothing is there at the moment because I don't have any test uh, to run at the moment, but I'll show you just in a minute. All right, so let's go back. So list of assertions are as follows. So we have different type of assertions. So now we are no longer talking about the listeners now. Now we are talking about the real assertion. What are the different type of assertions we can use on our test? And if I go back to JMeter, I'll show you. So if I go back to the HTTP request, go to add, go to assertions. These are the different type of assertions on your screen that you can use for your test. So you can use response assertion. You can use JSON assertion. You can use size assertion, you know, duration assertion. You can use any of these assertions to validate your test, to say, yes, I'm on the right screen, to say, yes, they test my uh, expected result actually equals to my actual results. So that is what you use assertions for. And you have different type of them that you can choose from, but I'll be using probably one or two out of those numerous ones to illustrate how it actually works for you. All right, let's move on. So this is just explaining the different type of assertions that we have. One of them is response assertion. So response assertion can be used to add and compare pattern strings against one or many values of server response. So for example, when you send a request to the uh, google.com and get the server response, here you can verify that the response by using response assertion. So you can insert, you know, tied to Google as a pattern to test field value in your response assertion. So if response doesn't contain this string, it will fill the sampler. All right, so uh, let me show you, let me go to, Let me go to the internet quickly. So let's assume I'm on www. Uh, QA.skiptree.com. And probably I want my, my users, the trades, to be eating on about us, right? Or on community, on anything, it could be search, it could be your search icon, right? And I need to, I want to validate, or I want to assert some of the things on this page because my thread, the threads I'm using already eat on probably the search button. That is what they are meant to eat on, right? And I want to confirm that, yes, they are actually, after eating on that search button, we are actually on the right page. So I can use, like this text for my assertion to confirm that oh on this page can you actually see this text which i'll show you uh in a minute as well so that is what we are talking about there so the other one we'll talk about is size assertion so size assertion is used to verify the server response contain uh the expected number of bytes or not 
So when we send, if you, from what you can see on your screen, this is a table um, listeners, right? When you send the request and you get the response back, one of the items that will be displayed on uh, onto you will be your the byte, right? The response body will contain the byte, and you can assert that yes, that particular response contain a particular number. So we can assert that our response body has got. You know what? Let me just let's do it in JMeter so you can understand what I'm talking about. Actually, so we have our. Let's start from the beginning. So the, the blue sky data there will be your test plan, right? I change my to blue sky demo, and from your test plan, you right click, and add your trade users, which are add your trade group. Which this is my trade group. I can rename that to my users, right? So I can call the users, and here. Uh, number of trade users, the number of users that I want to use for my tests. Uh, I can say 20, I want to use 20 users. And what is the ramp up period that I want to use? I can say 40. And I need to select whether I want it to run infinite or I want it to run for a number of times, either once or twice. But for this, I'll leave it as one. I just, only, I just want it to run once. And, and if you can recollect from what I said last week, how we arrive at a number. So this means that I want to load 20 users, right? But I don't want to load these 20 users at the same time because we want to simulate uh, the live scenario, right? And if I ask you now to go on google.com, www.google.com, that's by the fact that I told you at the same time to go on that website, it is not possible for you to eat on that enter button at the same time so it's the same thing we are trying to do when it comes to performance testing so so we have 20 users right to eat on the system and we have 40 seconds to load those 20 users right so how do we now decide the intervals that we load each user and the way you calculate that is you divide so it will be your ramp up uh, period in seconds divided by your number by your number of trades, which in this case our ramp up period in seconds is 40, and our users, trade users, is 20. So 40 divided by 20 will give us two seconds. So that means every two, two seconds, each user will be added onto the system after two, two seconds till they reach 20. By the time they reach 20, then we must have exhausted the 40 seconds uh, given to us to load it. So now that we set our trade group, and from your trade group, you can set uh, your sampler, your HTTP request, which I've done here, HTTP request. And that is where you enter your IP address. For us, we'll be using uh, www.gifrit.com. So I can copy the... You paste it in there, but because you are using the HTTP um, request, I don't need to include the HTTP or the www. Right, so I can just leave it like that. The method is get, and what is the path that I want the user to be eating on? Right, uh, if you go back to the website and let's see, I want them to eat on the search button. Right search button. So I need to copy the endpoint for those who have attended the API class. So I need to copy the endpoint of this path, which is this one. Right. And I need to go back to my JMeter and insert it here. So that is the path I want my users to eat on. And I've set my HTTP IP address as well, my server. All right. If there are any parameters I want to pass, but in this case, like probably I want to log in or I need to enter my email and my uh, password, I can pass the parameter at the bottom here, but I'm not doing it here. I'll use another example to actually do that uh, for us. So for this one, we are just eating on a server, eating on the search button, right? 
Then after that, you need to indicate the type of listeners that you want to use for your test. Right. And as I discussed earlier on, your sample, your listeners are just the type and format you want your test results to be displayed uh, to be displayed back onto you. And you can select any of these ones, which I think I've selected. So you choose from your listeners. Your listeners are the type or the ways and manner you want your results to be displayed back to you. And for me, I think I've chosen uh, view results in table. I can choose one more. I can use multiple. So let's see if I can choose. I can use where's the graph or tree. I can view as tree as well, right? Okay. And as I said earlier on, I can use another listeners, which is the assertion one. So the same way, if you right click on your HTTP. Go to listeners and you can select if you are using assertion, you can select assertion result, right? Which I've done as well before, which is this one. And the last thing I want to do is if I go back to my HTTP request, I want to include the assertion itself that I will be using. So let's say I want to use response assertion, right? As we saw on the spread earlier on. So if I click on that, this is where I need to indicate uh, my validation method. This is where I need to input what I want the system to validate for me, to assert for me after landing on that page, whether it's there or whether it is not there. So let's go back to the site. Okay, and I said I want them to hit on the search button and I want them to assert that when they get on this page, I want to see, can you validate for me that you can see this text on this page right so i can copy that 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 is the text i want them to validate and if i go back to my jmeter so i want to use a text response this is what i want to use now because it's a text i just copied now and i'll be using contain right so when they land on that page because there are so many texts on that page but this text when they land i want Wherever the text is on that page, I want it to contain. And if I click on add, I want to, to I want it to contain what I just copied from that screen, which is item posted to give it circle. So that is what I want to validate. Sorry. All right. So that is what the system will go and check for for me whether, yes, I'm looking for this text. What is the text I'm looking for? I'm looking for item posted to give free circle to be present on that page when they landed on that page. And I've passed the parameter at the bottom, as you can see, that is a, that is a text that I want them to uh, run for me. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. So size assertion, I'll show you too after I run the, after I've run the response, okay, let's run the, let me run the test. One thing you have to do before you run your test is you must save your test first before you can run. So I need to take, I need to save this test plan first before it's going to let me run it. All right, so I need to decide what folders I'm saving it. But I need to give you a name before I save you anyway. So that would be what's the pro, what's my project name? Okay, Blue Sky demo. So if I say Blue Sky, Blue Sky demo. Dot JMX. So any file, any JMeter file will always end with JMX, right? So you need to select the folder you want to save it. I'll be saving mine in downloads, and I can click on save. All right, now it's saved in my download folder. So now I can run. But before that, if I haven't done that, it will not allow me to run. So let's try and run this test that we set the parameters for. If I can go back before running, the first one is our test plan, right? We name our test plan. The second one is uh, our trade group, which I set mine to users. You set your trade group, your number of trades, your ramp up period in seconds, and if you want to run it once, twice, or infinite. 
after that you set your http request because you'll be using web right is always start with http if you are wondering why http so because you are eating on the web and it's http that's why we're using http request and from there you set your listeners your listeners are just the different type of ways you want your result to be displayed back onto you uh, in my own case i've selected table as one of my listeners and i've selected tree as my second listener so i'll have my result will be displayed in two format for me and i'm using uh assertion listener as well because i'm using assertion uh, validator so i'm using assertion result just in case my assertion fails then i can view it under my assertion listeners to see why it's failing and stuff like that and in my response assertion is where i've declared that i'll be using a text response and i want to validate that when they landed on that page they can see my text which i've copied on that screen which is item posted to give it circle just to give me peace of mind that it's doing what i asked or the test is doing what it's been asked to do and stuff like that so yes that's a quick run through so we can let me run it and see what happens hopefully this passes so you click on run and the run should start as you can see on your screen which i'll explain in a bit it's loading the it's loading the thread two seconds apart till it reaches 20 because i'm using 20 users right so it's loading them two two seconds apart from each other two seconds wait for the next user load the next user wait two seconds load the next users so it's gonna get to 20 because i just wanted to run uh, to run once and now the test has finished because it's now on 20 right and from your screen if you look at the start time you can see uh the seconds so you can see 40 sec 47 seconds loaded the first one waited two seconds 49 loaded the next user uh waited two seconds 51 loaded the next one which was the uh, ramp up that i set earlier on so it's gonna wait two two seconds to load each user and as you can see that's what he has done and you can see the bytes that we are getting from each uh, from eating the server 120 125 91 26 we can use that as an assertion which i which i'll do uh the next with the next example we can see the sample time this is in milliseconds uh 1444 four, four. that is less than less than one seconds to return back uh the result so this is in a table format right we can as well view it in a tree format this is a tree format so you can expand it and and check it you can see size and byte 499 the latency the connect time uh the request that was sent uh that is qa.gifree.com slash home slash uh search which is our endpoint you can see the response data returning back to us you can see the header and all that so this is a table format right we are not getting there's if i click on the assertion result i will not see anything there because my assertion did not fail so that's why nothing is there right okay so let's do something to actually see is the assertion actually working or is it just a fluke or something so let me change this to something that we can reckon with to fill the test intentionally so i'll put something for those that know about osh puppy so now i'm using osh puppy is not on the run right why am i using osh puppy is not on the run if you go back if i go back to this side there's nowhere on this page you see that text there is nowhere on this page you see Osh Puppy is not on the run, right? So I'm expecting that assertion to fail this time around. 
because it's passing because they can see what I indicated, which is item posted to give it, right? That's why it's passing. But let's see whether it actually works or not, because myself, I don't know until I do a negative testing before I know whether, yeah, probably the assertion is working or not. So now I'm specifying that you should go and look for this text on that web page. Osh Poppy is not on the run. That is the text I want to validate now. That is the text I want to assert. So let's see if it actually works or not. But before then, let me clean my results. Let me clean so I can have a clean slate. So if you want to clean uh, the previous test, just click on this thing that looks like popcorn. You are eating popcorn in the cinema or something. So if you click on it, it will clear the test, your previous test. Uh, if I click on this, it will clear my previous test. So I can run a new test now. So let's see, let me click on run and see what happens. As you can see from your screen, the test is failing. And it's failing because there is nowhere on that web page that is landing on that says Osh Poppy is not on the run. That is why the test is failing. So let me let me let me wait for the test to finish running, then I will show you the assertion uh, message why it's failing. All right, now it's it's completed now, and the everything everything failed, right? So the assertion result, you can see now I have something in my assertion result. Earlier on, I didn't have anything because it was passing. So now response assertion test field. Why is that? Text expected to contain Osh Poppy is not on the run. But unfortunately, on this web page that is landing on, there's nothing like that. That is why it is filling. And that is how you do response assertion using uh, text validation. All right, and if I go to my tree result as well, if I expand it, I'll see the same thing. You can see response assertion. If I click on it, it's failing. You can see assertion failure message. Test field, text expected to contain Osh Poppy is not on the run. So assertion error false, assertion failure true. That is why, so you know, your actual must be equals to your expected. That is when your test passes, right? So on our own case, it's failing because they differs. That is why they are failing. So that is one type of assertion that you can do, right? So let's go back to the let's go back to the slide. The second one. Uh, the second one I'll showcase is the size assertion. Back to the J meter. So size assertion as I mentioned earlier on if i go to the table result i want to check under the byte right i want to check whether it's returning this byte right whether one two five one two six is being returned that is size i want to check the size whether that size is being returned back to me so i can use this one to do my assertion as well so how do i do that so let me remove uh my response assertion because I don't need my response assertion anymore. So I can right click on that and I can remove it. Yes, I want to remove that. So instead of that, I want to add size assertion because I want to do size uh, validation now, right? So in my size validation, I want, so what, what is the, So the byte in size is 1259126. So 1259126, that is my byte. So I want the full response of my byte to equals to. So you can use greater than, you can use less than, you can use greater than or equals to. But in my own case, I want 
the actual size to equals to what I'm specifying in the size uh, in my column. That is what I want, right? Okay, so let's see if that will pass or if that will fail. So let me clean my slate. Uh, I can clean this. I want to clean this and the table as well. I want to clean. So let me do a new run and see if that is actually true or not. And as you can see, green means all good, no worries. That is why it's passing because my size assertion is equal is equals to um, what I'm getting. What I've, spec what I've specified is equal to what I'm getting. The response in bytes that I'm getting one two five nine one two six. Okay, we can say probably this is a fluke as well. Uh, probably it's not even testing anything. Everything is just turning green. Probably, you know, we can do a negative one as well and see whether it's actually doing something or not. So if I go back to my, if I click on assertion result, nothing will be there because it's passing, right? Uh, let me check the tree as well. You won't see any information because they are all passing. All right, so let me go back to this size assertion. And instead of 1259126, I want it to return. I'm expecting, let me put 1259128, right? I want it to be equals to 1259128. Let me clean my slate and rerun the test. All right, I have a clean slate now, so let's rerun. And as you can see from your screen, that's a straight, fail, uh, uh, a straight failure. The test is failing. And why is it failing? Because my validation, my assertion, what I've specified, the bytes that I've specified there, my actual result is not equal to my expected result. Uh, to my expected result, the actual result is one two five nine one two six, but the expected result is one two five nine one two eight. So let's go to the assertion result, and as you can see, size assertion. The result was the wrong size. It was one two five nine one two six bytes but should have been equal to 1259128. And that is why the test is failing. Same thing, if I go to my tree, I can see if I expand it, I can see the same message on here, the assertion failure message, the result was the wrong size. It was 1259126 bytes, but should have been equals to 1259128. So that is how you do uh assertion anyway so i've shown you how to do a response assertion and i've shown you how to do a size assertion on this note i'm going to take any question if anyone has got any question with what you've seen so far and i use two minutes to answer that All right, one of the question is, how do you get the byte you are using for the size assertion? All right, let me go back. One of the listeners that I use is a table, right? Is one of my listeners that I use. And from my table, you can see the headers, the headers of my table. I have sample, I don't, I'm don't, I don't intend to move that around. Let me move it back. So I have sample, I have time, I have thread name, I have label, I have sample time in milliseconds, I have status of my test, and I have bytes. The byte is the size that is the size of your test returning back to you in bytes. And you can see the byte is one two five nine one two six, and that is what I want to validate that this actual size is returning back to me. When I ran the first test, yes, 
it was passing because my actual result equals to my expected uh, expected result. So in my actual result, I have one two five nine one two six. Uh, my expected result, I have the same number, the same bytes inside. So the test passes, right? But my second uh, example, I intentionally filled it to see whether it's working or not. So I increase my byte, right, by two. So instead of one two five nine one two six, I I input one two five nine one two six uh one two eight as you can see here which is different from why i have but so if if this figure in bytes doesn't equal to what i've specified in my assertion uh table this one then the test will fail and that is why all these tests are failing saying the result was the wrong size. It was 1259126 bytes, but should have been equal to 1259128. I hope I've, I've been able to answer that. No, uh, does one need to attach comment? If yes, what should the comments include? The assertion result I've actually done. The assertion result I've actually done the work for you, and I will show you. Because when you are using assertion table, there's no other comment you want to include, as in that will be more than what has been given unto you here. This is all the information uh, that why your test is failing. Uh, you've, been, you've been given the, the information here that the result, the actual result it differs from the expected result and that is why the test is failing. What other question? Let me scroll up. I think I've missed some. You cannot determine the size assertion if you haven't run it. Same thing when you are doing. OK, that that tells me that you haven't you haven't gone far in your automation with that question. All right. So in your automation, right? Before you can do your I'm going back to your automation now. So this tells me that you haven't gone to that level yet in your automation. In your automation, your assertion is the last thing that you do. Right, so you have your given when then giving you navigate to gifrit.com uh, and you enter your email address and you enter your password when you click on sign in. Then that then is your assertion. Then the login page should be displayed. So before you can get to the then clause, you must have run your test before you can get to that page. So your test must have run, then you now look for what you can use on that page for your assertion. So you cannot determine your uh, assertion before running the test. You have to run the test first. See the page without using any assertion the first time. See what is displaying for you on the page. Then you can now decide that, yes, let me use text assertion. Let me assert that this text is visible on this website. So you cannot determine your assertion before running your test. No, you cannot do that. You have to run the test. So meaning you have to first run the test without before including your assertion to see what the page is displaying back onto you. But if you are doing the manual testing as well, I can as, as, as well include my assertion at the very beginning because I can do the manual one and I can see manually what the page will return back to me. Then I can include my assertion as well that way. Because I've run it, I can I can do it manually as well. I can go to that page manually and see what I can see manually on that page. I can navigate to that page manually and see what is there manually. Then I can use it. But if you don't want to do that, then you have to first run the test, see what is on the page that your threads are eating on, then use anything you it's on that page to do your assertion. So what I'm trying to say in essence is. I can navigate to this page manually without running my test, right? I can go to www.gifree.com and I know I want 
and I know I want my trade to hit on the search button, right? I can click on the search button manually myself, and this page will display on to me. And I know, that, okay, I want to use this text for my assertion. So I can do it that way before even running my test. Then you can you can include it uh, in your test run the first time as well. So I hope I've been able to answer that. All right, let me check one or let me take one or two more before we how do you get the byte you are using i think i've answered that i missed the assertion explaining in not sure of what important of what importance is it i have doing performance tests. i have been doing performance tests without it all right i don't know I don't know what sort of performance test that you've been doing, and I don't know the level, how, how far you've gone in your performance testing. The importance of assertion in performance testing is the same importance of your assertion in your functional testing. So when you are doing your functional testing and you say there's nothing to validate the test that you are running, so how do you know that your test that the script that you've written is actually running the actual test is actually doing what you what what it's meant to do how do you validate that how do you confirm that because there's tendency for you to write your script and it's doing totally something different at the back end so how do you confirm that yes i've written these 10 lines of script how do I know that each line is performing the action that I've written? So your validation method is your assertion. You want to assert that yes, all the script that I've written at the very end is doing what it's been asked to do. I can validate that, okay, given I navigate to gifrit.com uh, and I enter my username, and I enter my email address. When I click on sign in button, then the, I should be I, I should be signed in. How do I know I've been signed in? How do I know that the page hasn't taken me to the registration page? How do you confirm that if you are not using assertion? So if you can answer that question when when you are doing your functional testing, then you can apply the same method to your performance testing. So I don't know the level. I don't know. What sort of performance testing? So that is the essence of you using assertion. Assertion is your validation method. Is to confirm that yes, I've 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 written all this line line of code, and at the end of the day, I can sit back and relax. That I know for sure that he has performed what I asked him, uh, what I asked the system to perform. I have validated uh, my test, and I'm sure. Yes, I'm on the right. I'm on the right page. I'm on the right screen. The right text is displaying back to me. My string is returning the actual value. That is the essence of assertion. All right. Let me see if I can take one more before before going on. But you are able to get the byte after running the test. How do we get the number before running? For the byte, you cannot. Is your assertion thing? We have to get something right about assertion, right? For the text, this one is easier for me if I'm using a text, if I'm using a response assertion. Because manually, I can go onto that site, right? I can click on search and I can use this text for my response, right? But for the byte, that is back and I cannot see the byte, meaning I need to first run the test before I can see the byte. Then I can now use the byte to assert that. I can now use the byte to assert that it's the right one. So you cannot see the size before running your test. You have to first run your test. Then you now assert that the right size of byte is returning back to you. Demonstrated response and size for you. And we have duration assertion as well. 
which I'll pass on because of our time. But if you understand one logic, then you can apply that logic to other form of assertions. All right. So let's get familiar with the JMeter graphical user interface. I'm not sure whether I've gone through this last week, but anyway, let me quickly go through them again. So to start with the launch JMeter using these two simple, go to command. Yeah, I, I talked about this last week. If you want to kickstart, if you want to start your um, uh, test, if you want to run your JMeter for the first time, uh, every time you want to start your JMeter, is it that you navigate to the beam folder of your JMeter and click on JMeter.bat, or you can simply come to the search uh, to the search box uh, at the bottom of your screen and type JMeter.bat. It will do the same thing and click on Enter. It will it will kickstart the CMD for you, which is a command prompt. Then after a few lines of codes have been run on your command prompt, your Apache JMeter will load. So that is that. So JMeter is primarily divided into three major parts. Uh, we have the left pane, which is a, which left pane is the place where the test you want to execute resides. The configuration window is the middle one. In this window, we set the configuration and control the behavior of the test that we want to execute. Then we have the menu bar. It is an intuitive menu bar from where you may perform all the functions. So what that one is talking about, the left side of your screen, which where I have my Blue Sky demo users HTTP request, that is where all your tests are and the, the listeners that you'll be using, the HTTP that you'll be using, the samplers that you'll be using, the threads, everything is displayed on the left on the left hand side of your screen. And if for any reason you want to delete any of the sampler, any of the results, you can simply right click on it and you go to remove. That will remove the entire thing, the entire result for you. All right. Then the middle part is where your test uh, would display after running, uh, where the configuration will take place. Like when you are setting your HTTP request, the middle, uh, the big pan here, the middle one is where you set the IP uh, address. That is where you set the, the path as well and all that. So this is just the basic. Then to run your test, let me go back to the slide. All right, so that is that. Let me move on. I've explained that left pane to you as well. So when you when you first start, uh, so when you first start your test, you start with the test plan, but you can change the name of your of the test plan to the project that you are working on. You can rename that, right? Uh, then you have the configuration plan, which I've talked about as well. You set your test plan. I've done all these bits, which I know you, you know by now how to do it. You set the variables. If you are using any variables, I said I will use probably for my next, um, my next example, I'll try and use that and see how that works. You set the test plan properties, uh, the run trade group, the run teardown, and all that. You set it. And the menu bar, the menu bar is where you perform most of the function. That is, that is where you run your test from. If you want to upload any file, that is, you upload. Let me go. So you upload. If you want to upload, you use a. If you want to open any file from your local machine, you use this one to open it. Uh, if you want to save, you click on this button. Uh, what again? If you want to copy, if you want to paste, if you want to run your test, you click on that on the play button. And if you want to start your test without any pauses in between, you click on the second one. But actually, the first one will do the job. So the stop, it's not highlighted. It's grayed out now because I'm not I'm not running any test, right? 
But if you if when your test is running for one reason or the other, you want it to stop, you want to stop it, you don't want to run it anymore, you click on that. Uh, if you want to shut down the old test as well abruptly, you click on shut down. If you want to clear your results, as I've done the earlier run, you click on this on this icon that looks like you eating popcorn. Right. And when your test is running, you see the counter here running. So that is what this slide it's talking about. Let's move on because of our time. So I've explained, I've tried to explain all these icons to you, but even if you over on the icons, it will tell you what it's doing and what it's being used for. All right, so we have the start button, which I've explained, the start with no pause, the stop, and the shutdown, which I've explained to you as well. All right, you have the counter, you have the clear all, you show the number of errors. This is the amber sign will show if there is any error in my test when running it, it will show the number of errors on the amber sign that you can see second to the last on your screen. It will show it there. Creating your test plan. We've actually, we've graduated now. We know how to do all these bits. So you are to create your test plan. As I said, when you open up your Apache Gemeter, you see a blank uh, just test plan. And from there, you can rename it to demo project. You can rename, to, rename it to something more meaningful, right? The project that you are working on, you can rename it to it. And how to create a trade group, which I know by now you know how to do all this. You right click on your test plan, you go to add, you go to trade users, and you go to trade group. Then you can you can create your trade group in that way, which is the user. I name my users, right? And you can set all these uh, actions whether you want your test to continue if it if it encounters any error while running. If you want the trade to if you want to start the next trade loop, or if you want to stop the trade if any error is encountered, or you want to stop the old test, not even not a single trade, but the old test this time around when uh, an, an error occurred, right? So you set the criteria, then you go to your number of trades. That is the number of user you are using to emulate the test your ramp up period in milliseconds you set all those ones which i know i've talked about times many times now all right so the highlighted ones i've talked about it you need to set it your trade group the name you need to rename it set your trade users and your ramp up period all right so steps to remove element from jmeter which i've shown you as well i think i've gone beyond i've gone when i was talking i've gone beyond my spread right so you right click if you don't want any of these uh, samplers or result or listeners you can just simply right click on it go to remove and remove it and as i said before you can even run any test you have to save your test first before you can be able to run it. So that is how you remove anything you don't want from your test. And as you can see, the same thing I just showed you is on your screen right now. All right, add HTTP request, which you know how to add HTTP request to right now, because we have, we've actually run a test. I meant to have explained all this, but while running the test, I've actually explained all of them. Set the name of the server. That is when we went to the site that we want to run. I copy the URL without the endpoint, right? I copy the URL and went back to my JMeter HTTP request to set my IP address here. And I told you, you don't need to include the HTTP in front of it or the www. You don't need to include that one and you need to set your path your path is the is your endpoint that the trades will be eaten on so you need to set that and for mine because i'm eating on i want them to click i want to measure the response time when they click on the search button 
So that is when I copy the endpoint to use for my path for my test. And that is it. All right. I've actually gone way beyond my slide when, when explaining to you, so which is good at the same time. All right. Step four, add listeners. We know by now how to add listeners. If you don't know how to add listeners, you can ask me or replay the video. All right. And this is a table format of our results, which I've shown you as well. All right. And when you run, when you select a table listeners, right, this is the format that your response will be displayed back onto you which I can still go back to mine. I think I've got table. Yeah, so this is the same thing on that spread. We can see the response time, uh, the average response time that is returning. We can see the byte that is returning. We can see the connect time and all that. And when you're working in any organization, they must have in their I don't know, requirement or whatever it's called, they must have uh, specified what they are looking out for the response time that you are testing against every 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 industry they, they've got their own standard but i think the um I, i'm i stand to be corrected anyway i think the average the average response time generally it's i think it's seven seconds but that now differs from company to company from organization to organization but you must have been given what you are testing again, so you know what you are doing, you know what you are watching out for, if it's the response time, whether the response time that you are getting, uh, it's, it's way, way more than what you've been given to test against. So you report that back to the developer to say, look, these things after eating on start button, I meant to the response time, it's taking too much for the page to load instead of the page loading in three seconds it's taking the page 15 seconds to load that is you have to you have to you have to flag that to the developer so they can fix uh while staying developing while still developing before you actually deploy search to live environment all right so let me go back and see all right, how to add assertions, which we've actually done two assertions now. I've showed you this is when I use a text, uh, a response assertion, and I copied uh, a text from the web page that I'm testing on. All right, add the assertion listeners. I showed you how to add assertion listeners. That is when your test failed. And that is where you get your result back if you add the assertion listeners. So this assertion result is my assertion listeners, right? And it will display only when your test fails, when your actual result differs from expected result. When they don't agree, that is when your test failed, right? And that is the only time you have something in your assertion pane that will be displayed back to onto you. All right, probably I should quickly say next week, I think there's one more, there's one more class next week for performance testing. So my friend or my colleague will be taking you through uh, the next week class by taking you through another tools for performance testing, which is new load. So he will be taking you through new load next week. So don't miss it all right so and that is the assertion result when it fails which you know by now as well all right so we are done uh looking at the features on jmeter right these are the basic features you can use on jmeter to run your test you've seen how you can do your how you can add your trade groups how you can add your http requests to your trade group how you can add your sampler how you can add your listeners how you can add your assertions how you can add your assertion results you know all that by now and how you can set the criteria the parameters oh we haven't done the parameters i'll show you how to do the parameters but i won't be using jmeter to do parameters uh, for you. At the beginning of this course, I made mention that we'll be looking at 
uh, J meter and blaze meter, right? Uh, we'll be looking at J meter, blaze meter chrome extension, and blaze meter itself as a performance tool. So I'll be using uh, blaze meter chrome extension to do the parameter for you. That is just like record and play kind of a thing. So that is the next thing we'll have a look at now. But well, for the for the Apache JMeter itself, or how to carry out tests on Apache JMeter, this is all I have for you. Although for the Blaze Meter Chrome extension, I'm still coming back to Apache. I'm still coming back to JMeter. Just that uh, I'm using another tool to load my test onto uh, JMeter.